Haiti has fallen into the abyss. Not very surprisingly, Haiti has finally collapsed. As if it weren't already enough to be the poorest country in the entire northern hemisphere and to be going through a very severe humanitarian crisis, now it has to deal with a huge explosion of violence and a political earthquake. Chaos unfolds in Haiti as Caribbean leaders call an emergency meeting Monday. We've already told you here on Visual Politic about the tremendous problem Haiti has with its criminal gangs. Gangs that, over the years, have been gaining more and more strength. The issue of Haiti's street gangs is a complex one, because for decades they've been part of the country's social and political fabric. In fact, in this disastrous country, it has been very common for public administrations and politicians to use the gangs to fulfill their objectives, to line their pockets, and to maintain power at all costs. Not surprisingly, this has led to the strengthening of these criminal groups to the point, as we're going to see in this video, that they now determine the very functioning of the Haitian state. The poorest country in the Americas today has its own political system. It is not a democracy and it is not a dictatorship. It is a pitched war between gangs. Or to put it more bluntly, those who are really in charge, those who control the country, are the street gangs. But how have the gangs managed to deal such a heavy blow to the Haitian state? How have they managed to to amass so much power? Is there a solution to the spiral of chaos and violence in which this Caribbean country is immersed? Well, we're going to take a look at that right now. The Collapse of a Country If there were an annual international competition for the country with the worst news, Haiti would be by far one of the top medalists. So far, this country has had a 2024 to forget, and a particularly nightmarish month in March. Visual politic viewers, the month began with news that was anything but reassuring. Just take a look. Inmates escape after attacks on two prisons in Haiti's capital. That's right, street gangs stormed the country's two main prisons. The state penitentiary in Port-au-Prince, the capital, which held 4,000 prisoners, and Croix de Bouquet, which held another 1,400. The objective? To free the prisoners. Thousands of dangerous criminals who were largely gang members. This, in a regular country, would be such a scandal that it would probably be resolved with some quick action by law enforcement. But we're talking about Haiti, a place where the state has failed in even the most basic things. The attack on these prisons highlighted two serious problems that the country has been facing for some time. The first is that, with almost 12 million inhabitants, it has barely 9,000 police officers and hardly any army. In fact, there are only nine independent countries in the world with fewer police per 100,000 inhabitants, and all of them are in Africa. Then, another big problem is that the prisons, besides being overcrowded, are in such bad condition that those who rule inside are the criminals themselves, to such a degree that you cannot even imagine. To make matters worse, months ago, the two largest gangs in the capital, Port-au-Prince, allied to begin their particular crusade against the government of Ariel Henry. Since September 2023, the G9 family and allies gang, led by the country's biggest capo, Jimmy Barbecue Cherizia, have had a non-aggression pact with the G-Pep gang, forming a coalition called Vivir Juntos. To give you an idea of the disaster of a country we are talking about, in Haiti, criminal street gangs have connections with political parties and even with the government itself. For example, the G9 family and allies gang was found to have connections to former Haitian president Jovenel Moise, and the G-Pep gang is linked to the opposition. In the end, the gangs in Haiti are organized in a kind of federation of gangs, which are the ones that control crime. So you could say that instead of having political parties, Haiti has criminal gangs. Anyway, the thing is that with this new Living Together coalition, the big rival gangs put aside the tough war they had been waging since 2020 to fight together against Ariel Henry's government. And don't think that they're messing around. Barbecue, Haiti's criminal kingpin, if the prime minister does not resign, there will be a civil war, a genocide. Ex-cop Jimmy Cherizier, leader of a shifting federation of criminal groups in the capital Port-au-Prince, makes a challenge to the government amidst chaos. The fact is that Prime Minister Henry, who was already very unpopular, did not give in to the blackmail of the gangs that controlled 80% of the capital and instead decreed a state of emergency on the same day of the attack. However, the situation degenerated so quickly that when Henry wanted to return from Kenya, where he was on an official visit to manage the crisis, he could not even enter Haiti. In the style of a 1990s Hollywood blockbuster, gangs were attacking the country's main airport in order to take control of it. In fact, at the time of making this video, the country's main airport is still mainly closed to traffic and with flights cancelled. 
Clashes between gangs and government forces have also forced the closure of the country's largest port, which was being ruthlessly looted. Of course, all this has also made the situation extremely serious from a social point of view. Supplies are not reaching the island, and the hospitals have collapsed because there are almost no doctors, since all those who could have left Haiti. Gunfire and explosions in the streets have been constant in recent weeks. In short, Haitian streets have become a real jungle. Faced with this situation, President Henry finally resigned on March 12th. The resignation will take effect when a transitional council is formed. But of course, the problem is that this is nothing short of a major victory for the criminal gangs. In the end, with extreme violence, the assault on critical infrastructure, the seizure of prisons, and by terrorizing the population, they have achieved what they wanted, the Prime Minister's departure. We are, therefore, witnessing live the collapse, the implosion, the fall of a state. Now, many of you may be asking yourselves one question. What on earth did the street gangs have against the Prime Minister to want to bring down his government in such a savage way? Well, there are two main reasons being tossed about. One is political, and the other has to do with the gang's own interests. The first, the political one, has to do with the fact that Henry assumed the post of Prime Minister and acting president after the assassination of President Jovenel Moise. In other words, Henry has never never run for election. He did promise to hold elections almost immediately after taking office. But almost three years later, there has been no sign of those elections. And of course, that has not pleased the rival factions one bit. Remember what we've already said. In Haiti, the gangs and the political parties have many, many connections. Not surprisingly, this argument about the lack of elections is basically the excuse with which the gangs hope to gain legitimacy. The real issue has to do with President Henry's position towards these gangs. Until recently, Prime Minister Ariel Henry had declared a war between the state and the gangs. He even went so far as to call for international intervention to fight violence in the country. Henry called for the deployment of a multinational force to support the police to prevent gangs from continuing to block roads, drive citizens from their homes, or force the closure of schools, hospitals, and businesses. The UN Secretary General supported this request, and the gangs feared that foreign intervention could ultimately take away their control over the country's streets. So I'm guessing the hatred of Henry by the criminal gangs doesn't come as much of a surprise to you anymore, does it? But now, how is it possible that street gangs, made up of lowly gang members, could reach such great heights of power and strength in a country? Well, visual politic viewers, on this subject, there is a lot to cover. So, listen up. The Road to Power As we've told you before, the gang problem in Haiti is nothing new. It has been going on for at least 40 years. However, never before have the gangs had as much power as they have today. Descendants of the so-called Tonton Makute, the militia of dictator Francois Duvalier and his son Jean-Claude, Haitian gangs began to flourish alongside paramilitary groups once the Duvalier dynasty fell in 1986. A few years later, in 1995, former president Jean-Bertrand Aristide disbanded the Haitian armed forces. The reason was continual human rights violations by the armed forces, corruption, and their constant meddling in politics. But what he didn't count on was that many of the military's ex-members would go on to make a living by creating criminal structures, much more professionalized gangs, and with military experience to boot. And that is exactly what happened. Suddenly, the streets were filled with gangs made up of ex-military and ex-cops. As a result, things went from bad to worse. On top of that, we have to think about business. The reason for the existence of these criminal groups is that they engage in all kinds of criminal activities. But in recent years, one activity has stood out above all others. We are talking, of course, about drug trafficking. Haiti has become one of the main transit points for both cocaine from Colombia and Venezuela, as well as marijuana from Jamaica. And not surprisingly, all of this huge and lucrative logistical business is controlled by the gangs. What's more, as they have grown richer, they have invested more and more in arming themselves to the teeth, both to protect their business and to control entire neighborhoods within the country. In fact, it was this huge flow of drugs constantly passing through Haiti that is believed to have had much to do with the 2021 assassination of 
President Moise at the hands of a group of Colombian mercenaries. And so, with all this instability and violence, this is how we have reached the present day. Of course, having told you all this, the burning question is very clear. What can be done about the chaos and gang violence in Haiti? Does the international community finally intend to do something to pull the country out of the chaos? Well, stay tuned. A labyrinth with no way out? With all that we have told you, you can already get an idea that any solution for Haiti will not come overnight. The country could even end up plunged into civil war. It's not out of the question. The situation is so serious that there is a risk that this failed state of 12 million inhabitants, located in the middle of the Caribbean, between South America and the United States, will become a major international epicenter for narcotics trafficking. Besides that, there is a risk that a huge wave of refugees could flood into neighboring countries such as the Dominican Republic. For this reason, not only is work being done to try to move forward with important international humanitarian aid programs, but the possibility of deploying foreign military personnel in the country is also being considered. CARICOM and U.S. urge political transition in Haiti and deployment of multinational mission. An urgent meeting of CARICOM, the Caribbean community, was held on 11th of March with the United States, France, and Canada as guests. At that meeting, what was proposed was basically a stabilization plan. Based on the Montana Agreement, a roadmap designed in 2021 to address Haiti's dire political and social situation, the new stabilization plan provides for the creation of a transitional council. It would be composed of seven members from the private sector and politics, an international observer, and even a representative of the religious sector. Once the council was composed, it would function as an acting government, and Ariel Henry would formally step down as acting prime minister and dissolve his government. However, given the precedence with this country, many analysts believe that it is very likely that this stabilization plan will go nowhere. First, because corruption is an endemic evil that hinders any change. Don't forget that Haiti is the eighth most corrupt country in the world, according to Transparency International. And secondly, it is very likely that the gangs will never accept any proposal that includes their disarmament or the loss of their lucrative business. They certainly won't do it voluntarily, no matter how much a transitional council asks for it. In fact, Jimmy Barbecue Cheritzier, the country's top criminal leader, has already made this very clear. We Haitians have to decide who is going to be the head of the country and what model of government we want. We are also going to figure out how to get Haiti out of the misery it's in now. In all likelihood, if the transition process does not take into account the demands of the armed gangs, it will fall on deaf ears sooner rather than later. And on top of all this, there is yet another problem. Kenya, which had pledged to send 1,000 police to lead a multinational stabilization mission, has decided to put this on hold. Basically, Nairobi wants to see what comes out of this transition process before putting its men on Haitian soil. The problem? Well, if the transition process fails because of the gangs, and the gangs continue to control the capital, and who knows, maybe the whole country, the Kenyan mission may never come about. But don't get discouraged so quickly. There is another option on the table that has been gaining momentum in recent days. We can fix it, but we'll need a UNSC resolution, the consent of the host country, and all the mission expenses to be covered. A few months ago, we told you here on Visual Politic about the possibility that Haiti could end up doing a Bukele. <laughs> What would be a turn of events is for Bukele himself to take the reins of an international military coalition to end, in his own way, the gangs in Haiti. His plan, of course, would be a replica of what he has already done in El Salvador with the Maras, perhaps even tougher. And the fact is that hopes for any other alternative are so low that there are already voices beyond Haiti's borders advocating for this solution to be taken seriously. Among them, its neighboring country, the Dominican Republic. Wait a minute, because this idea is very unlikely to materialize, at least as long as Biden is in the White House. The Biden administration has been very critical of Bukele's approach to fighting crime in El Salvador. So, it would be a bit odd for the United States to now legitimize and fund that strategy by replicating it in Haiti. And of course, without US support, it's virtually impossible to get anything done. In any case, this mission, as we have told you, would not arrive until a transitional government is formed. Even so, the plan is ready. 
In October 2023, the UN Security Council approved the deployment of a multinational force in Haiti. The idea is to reduce the power of the gangs in Haiti within 12 months and to regain effective control of critical infrastructure such as airports, ports, and hospitals. To achieve this, a whole foreign police force made up of units from several countries would be financed, although mainly from Kenya. But they could also come from other African countries such as Benin or Chad, and even from Caribbean neighbors such as the Bahamas or Barbados. The fact is that so far, the United States has already committed $300 million and Canada another $60 million. Even so, remember that without a transitional government, there will be no mission. So for the time being, that is the number one priority. So you see, while the gangs have taken over the Haitian capital and succeeded in getting Prime Minister Ariel Henry to resign, all eyes are now on whether a transitional government can bring an international force to the country. It's a difficult situation because the criminal gangs are not going to let them come and take away their business and power, so you could be sure that they will do anything to avoid it. The convulsive and violent climate in Haiti may be just the beginning, and the worst is yet to come. This is a very real risk. In any case, we at Visual Politic will be following very closely what happens, and we'll tell you about it in another one of our videos. But until then, the questions are for you. Do you think street gangs could end up being part of the solution? Do you think a Bukele-like plan avoiding negotiating with criminals would be better? Could Haiti end up descending into a Civil War. Leave us your opinions below in the comments and let's start a debate. And very importantly, if you liked this video, please like it and subscribe to Visual Politic if you haven't already done so, so you won't miss any news. As always, thank you very much for being there. All the best, and I'll see you next time.